So a new week has started and you're looking for setups that are really going to be profitable for you in your in your week, right? So how do you go about that? Three things that I usually mention. One is identify direction. It doesn't matter time frame that you're going to use. Though APN Academy recommend using monthly for your direction, then you get structure in weekly or daily, and then you look for the entry time frame. So those are the uh, the, the steps that you have to use when you want to get a profitable uh, a setup. That's what we call a top-down analysis, what we call multi-time frame analysis, so that you have a picture of whatever is happening at different time frame before you get your entry. And in most cases, they should be aligning. Even if they're not aligning, you have to know what is missing so that they can all align, so that you capitalize on that. So we're going to be using an example of gold, and maybe we can pick another example so that, we, so that you can see exactly how we put this into practice, right? So uh, starting from the monthly time frame, we're looking for direction. In the previous video, I've been talking about this for some time. We expected gold to move from down here to come and retest this area here. Though currently we see it is slightly above it, we shall see it in the next lower time frame. So what, why did we expect it to go up from down here to up here? Because of the rules of the M. We say the moment an M happens, the neckline is broken. We expect the market to come and retest that. Then we said after retesting here, what next? We said we expect either double bottoms we expect lower low or we expect a higher low before the market decides next direction. So currently, that's the market has come to the neckline. But let's go to the next lower time frame so that we can identify exactly uh, where is it in the next lower time frame so that we can capitalize on it. So let's go down to the weekly time frame, which is the next immediate one. Now, recording the previous uh, breakdowns, I told you guys that uh, our target was on gold was this area here. Actually, let me first delete it so that I can mark it for you with a line so that you can see it properly. Our target was this one here when we're selling from up here. Why that area? Because we had a false breakout here. I hope you can see it. The market was rejected here. We expected to either create a bottom or break it clearly, retest it and continue down, or come react with and it continues up. Instead, the market created what? It created what we call a, it created what we call a false breakout. Now, when a false breakout happens, we expect the market to come and test it again. So that's why we put our target there, right? What happened this time on the market broke it down, but it had created a structure here plus an impulsive move, which we spoke about last time, right? So this also was communicating that the market had to come back up and retest this area here, which we mentioned clearly in the previous video. So it's the same situation still that we are seeing in this same time frame here weekly, which was communicating the same thing with uh with uh monthly so i told you guys to add one more thing either you can add two lines like this because this whole area here needed to be uh, tested i also mentioned it in the previous previous video it needed to be tested right now let's slightly go into uh the daily time frame and see is it communicating the same thing also was it communicating about a retracement and we see how to push down now when we come to a daily time frame want us to do something a bit uh more detailed right so, because we've been speaking about uh, gold ever since it was up this side, right? But now, let's understand this movement when the, the market was coming down. I'm just going to use some slabs. I want you to be attentive here. When the market created this M and created this neckline here, we had a false breakout. Broke down, broke up, but the area was not tested. Yes, there was a test here, but not a proper test. The market came back and tested it, right? So, we're done with that level. But remember, when the market continued down, it created a new level here. When the market came to test up here, it means that this area is not tested. That's why the market came back here and tested this level here. What does that mean? It means that we have another level that the market has not tested, which is this area here. Are we together? Now, what will cause confusion is that this area here actually was tested, which is true. It was tested. But in the process, the market left a hidden structure. So just increase for you the candle size so that you can see it properly. In the process of testing this area here, the market left a hidden structure, which you can only see when you go to line chart if you're not well experienced, right? We have a hidden structure exactly where price is trying to turn from or is attempting to turn from here, right? So when I go back to candlesticks, this is the structure. This whole area here is the structure that uh, we ex I expect gold to test to give us a push down. Now, the only threat that we do have is that the market has broken this standing point and this standing point here. So what we want to see, we want to see how the that the market rejects from this area here to come with a weak mom to come with the momentum of reacting into this area here so it gives us a weak momentum upwards then we break back below are we together so that we can continue in case we have to continue lower fulfill the rules of the m right but if that doesn't because currently if it is observed we are currently above the neckline for those for these rules of the m's to be fulfilled we need it to actually break uh, to come react into this area here then gives us a weak momentum 
with a lower high or double tops, then we break downwards. So when you break below here again, we shall expect to retest this area and we can come lower, whether create double bottom or higher low or even a lower low like we do expect. So currently, if you're looking for my perspective on gold, I'm still bearish on gold. Why? Because the smart money is still very bearish on gold. They have not yet started shifting away from, <clears throat> excuse me, they have not started shifting away from uh, uh, the selling to buy. Of course, I've spoken about it several times, several times that actually gold in the long term is bullish. But it being in the long term bullish is we don't have that money to trade like these big guys to hold and all that. Because if you look at this momentum here, this momentum, you see, this is a strong push up, retracement, strong push, retracement, strong push. Now, this is a deep correction. This momentum here is not a sell momentum. It's a, just a mid-term movement downwards. But the bigger picture is we need gold to continue higher. That's why in my swing positions, which I showed you guys, uh, okay, I didn't show you the positions, but I showed you the structure that I was trading, that my targets were exactly where the market hit. And I told you when the market was there that the expert to continue a little bit inside here too tap into these zones, which it did before continuing high, coming to retest higher. Yeah. Actually, I thought it would stop here and then it starts pushing up, but it was so aggressive to come into this structure that was not tested. So uh, in my perspective, uh, gold is overall bullish, but want to utilize this uh, mid-term uh, movements here, right? So uh, that's, I wanted to explain that in depth so that you can understand it. Now, what next? In case the market does not uh, respect this area, when the market breaks this area here, that's when I'll be bullish on gold. But for now, I'm still bearish on gold. And also that is one. And secondly, I want to see uh, the market makers shifting uh, their positions from sell to buy, which they have not yet done. Last week, they're still bearish. This week, they're still bearish. So I am not moving away from selling gold yet. So, but for the, the structure has to come back to my side because the structure currently has broken above the neckline. These two lines are the necklines. So I want it to come into the neckline, react to show us that this level here is significant. Weak momentum into this zone here or a lower high and we close below. Weak momentum and we can fulfill the rules of M, either down bottom or higher low or even a lower low. Then we can see that. So this is the structure. All the structures are still bearish besides these ones that are uh, besides them closing slightly above the neckline, but the structures are still bearish. We just want that to be fulfilled. Now, let's check in case I'm a skull power intraday, what do I want to do? Let's go into slightly to one of the entry time frames, which is H4. In case you don't know how we operate, we operate using H4. Now, H4 agrees exactly what, with what I've been explaining to you that I want it to happen. So H4 shows you that we have a push up, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, aggressive high. So what do we want? When there's an impulsive move, you can use a Fibonacci, but I don't encourage you to use it in the entry time frame. But if you want, you can use it. So when you use the Fibonacci, Fibonacci levels exactly into this area here. So we want the market to push, which has already pushed up. Let it give us a push inside this area. Give us a weak reaction. Then it closes below. On a weak retracement, then we can continue selling. And one of the levels that the market didn't test is this one, which you can use as your target, this area here. The market didn't touch it properly before starting this push up. So in case the market does this and gives us a weak momentum and confirms a selling pressure, you can take your trades either from that area in case you're an aggressive trader. If you're not, wait for it to close below this area, weak retracement, and then you can sell until this level here as intraday or uh, someone who doesn't want to hold for long. The other target can be this area here. So I, these are all higher, higher lows if you can notice it, right? Not double bottoms yet right? So those who are planning to trade gold, this is my perspective on it, right? Now, let's take another example, which I've been talking about quite a number of times, and uh, so that you can understand the, the concept very, very well. So um, let me look at, let's talk about GBPUSD, because uh, they're both dollar related. Let me just remove what I was using. I was using those levels to trade. So when you look at GBPUSD, as usual, what do you do? You have to start from monthly to get the direction. I'm not saying these are the exact time frames you should use, uh, but they give us a comfortable direction that I would like you to use. Now, looking at GBPUSD, I've spoken about it before. I told you guys I'm not trading it until the month closes below this area, which the month did. So when the month closed below this area, I was waiting for the market to go and retest that area, which I spoke about here, right? Giving me the direction up and then downwards. I'm already bearish on it, right? Because it did exactly what I was looking for. Why did I do that? Because the market created a high, higher low, high, higher low, high. Then the market is break, it closed below. So it's telling me I'm no longer interested. Creating what? Creating for me the third type of M that I taught you guys. High, higher low, then higher high, then breaks down all these turning points here with an aggressive push, meaning that the selling pressure is really strong. 
those who use candlestick patterns, uh, you can also see this was a tweezer top, right? When bodies are the same, meaning that the pressure is equal, then we want to see the next candle here. That's what I was waiting for last, last month. I spoke about it here. So the direction for me is bearish, unless otherwise. So having known the direction, which area will I be targeting so that I can uh, be able to watch, watch my positions and I, and I don't uh, forget about it. This is the area I'll be watching. It looks short, but remember this is monthly. Let's go into the next lower time frame, which is weekly. And you can clearly see in weekly, the market went and tested my area, which was this one here that I was interested in the market. Uh, but testing, then we can push down. Now, when you come to weekly, we can add another area of threat, which is exactly this point here, the market. Uh, you can see the market was rejecting from to go and test this level here. So in case you're not in this bearish move, what do we want to see? You want to see the market uh, pushing and breaking this level on the retest, and then you can take your trade up to this level here. Remember, even if uh, you have some uh, some amount of capital that is relatively bigger to the average trader, you want to take trades at resistance levels in case you're selling. If you're buying, you want to take trades at support levels. Don't trade in between. For example, this trade is in between. Either wait for the market to come to test this turning point here because right now we have a turning point here. I'll just delete this so that I can show you. We currently have a turning point here, right? So maybe if the market comes back to this turning point, which is in weekly, and then you can say that I'm buying, I'm sorry, I'm selling at resistance, right? But do not trade when it is in between. Either wait for it to break this support level on the retracement, then you can take your trade. Weak retracement, please. Or wait for it to give us a weak retracement into this area, then we can set it down here. So monthly and weekly communicating the same thing. Then when we come down to the daily time frame, and you can see it's currently matching the level we're drawing in weekly is matching the daily neckline here so we broke down with a retest but this are not, this is not a proper retest so if the market can give us a weekly retest into this level here then you can sell up to here if you're an intraday or you want to hold for some some time or and also if it breaks this area here we shall expect if it breaks the market gives us a weekly retracement into this area and then we can take our sales up to this level here i've spoken about all this in the previous uh, videos how i expect it to unfold so far the steps are not going bad right? If you've been following, this is exactly what we have been talking about. And this is how you lay out your levels with a clean chart. We don't have any noise here. Make sure you don't plant a lot of things, indicators and what. If you want to use an indicator, just use it as a confluence to help you. Don't use more than two. Use just one to help you as a confluence. But start with your price action. Uh, you can look at some bit of calendar to help you to know when events are happening because some traders say that they don't trade fundamentals, blah, blah. Fundamentals are like fuel of the market. They're very, very important. It's like driving a car. You need fuel to move it, right? So that is daily. Now, when you look also at the, daily, at the entry timeframes, I'm going to look at one of them, which is H4. Let's just come to H4. Now, H4, you can clearly see the market has become bearish. At first, it was bullish, making higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Then the market tells us, I am not interested in continuing down. Sorry, upwards. Gives us a very strong pressure. We test this area. Then we push down. So currently, the market is most likely to give us a weak push into this area here. Even if it gives us a push slightly higher to manipulate, just watch this leg here. If it gives us again another change of trend and says, I'm no longer interested in continuing up, that's where you take yourself from. Either here or here then you can take your trade up to this level here. When it breaks this level, repeat the same process. Weak retracement, watch it when it is communicated that I'm longer interested in going up, take your trade up to down here. So those who trade TBP USD and if you're looking for setups, and these two are the things that you have on your watch list, you can compare it with your, with your setup and your analysis that you had done and you can uh, try to utilize them. That is it from us at Epin Academy. If you've not subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button because we do give you valuable uh, content to help you shorten the distance to uh, your, your journey of consistency. That is it for today and have a profitable week.